Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 4th of January. India to soon start world's largest vaccination drive, says PM Modi. Islamic State claims killings of 11 minors from Pakistan's Shiite Hazara minority. And Nepal's PM Oli argues house dissolution a political move, not matter of judicial review. And now for all the details. A day after India approved the emergency use of two Made in India vaccines against COVID-19, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday said that India is on the threshold of starting the largest vaccination program in the world. Addressing scientists at the National Metrology Conclave, Modi said it must be ensured that Made in India products not only have global demand but also global acceptance. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday said India will soon start the largest vaccination program in the world. A day after the country formally approved the emergency use of two Made in India vaccines against the coronavirus. PM Modi, while speaking at the National Metrology Conclave via video conferencing, during which he laid the foundation stone of the National Environmental Standards Laboratory, said, India does not want to fill the world with its products, but win the hearts of every customer of Indian products in every corner of the world. Bharat ke एक नहीं दो दो मेड इन इंडिया कोविड वैक्सीन विकसित करने में सफलता पाई है भारत में दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा कोविड वैक्सीन प्रोग्राम भी शुरू होने जा रहा है इसके लिए देश को अपने वैज्ञानिकों के योगदान पर the Drugs Controller General of India over the past weekend approved Oxford COVID-19 vaccine Covishield, manufactured by the Serum Institute, and indigenously developed co-vaccine of Bharat Biotech for restricted emergency use in the country, paving the way for a massive inoculation drive. Meanwhile, as the country is witnessing a downfall in the daily COVID-19 cases, Authorities are easing restrictions like reopening schools and temples in several states after months of lockdown due to COVID-19 precautions. The COVID-19 active case load continues to remain below the 300,000 mark in India, with only 16,505 new infections recorded on Monday. The number of people recovering from the disease also continues to rise which has pushed the national recovery rate to 96.19%. Farmers' protest against new farm laws entered the 40th day as the seventh round of talks between the Indian government and the representatives of protesting farmers resumed on Monday afternoon to resolve the impasse. The farmers' protest against three new agricultural laws that liberalise agriculture sector entered the 40th day while the seventh round of talks between the farmer unions and the Indian government took place on Monday afternoon to end the month-long deadlock. The meeting on Monday could not reach a breakthrough as the government once again ruled out rollback of the three farm laws, which has been the main demand of the protesting farmers. The government has argued the farmers will gain if private players can buy directly from them, bypassing antiquated wholesale markets. Meanwhile, the farmer unions rejected the government's offer of amendments. Another round of talks between the two sides is now set to take place on January 8. Farmer leaders had earlier announced they would intensify protests if their demands were not met. 
On Monday, several Buddhist monks also joined thousands of farmers who have been camping out at New Delhi's borders since late November, despite cold and rain in the past few days. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Party leader Maryam Nawaz on Sunday said that the days of Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government are numbered as she addressed a grand rally of Pakistan Democratic Movement and 11-party opposition alliance. The opposition has intensified its rallies and warned of a long march to Islamabad if Khan does not resign by 31st of January. Calling Prime Minister Imran Khan as fake and incompetent Prime Minister, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz or PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz on Sunday said that the support of people in Bahawalpur has shown that the government's days in power are numbered. Speaking during a power show by 11-party opposition alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement in Bahawalpur, Maryam said, that Imran Khan's policies have led to skyrocketing inflation and has doubled the country's debts without installing a brick in the way of development. Meanwhile, PDM Chief Molana Fazlu Rahman called the opposition's drive against Imran Khan-led PTI government a jihad and announced that stepping back from it would be a major sin. The PDM has been leading a campaign against Imran Khan-led government to quit by January 31 or face intensified movements by opposition parties, including a long march to Islamabad. Moving on. The militant group Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the Sunday's attack that killed 11 minors from Pakistan's Shiite Hazara minority in Balochistan province. Hazaras have been frequently targeted by Taliban, Islamic State and other Sunni Muslim militant groups in both Pakistan and Afghanistan. The Islamic State claimed responsibility for an attack on Sunday that killed 11 minors from Pakistan's minority Shiite Hazaras in Balochistan province. The attack took place early on Sunday morning in the much area of Bulan district, killing the minors who were in a shared residential room near the coal mine where they worked, officials said. The throats of the coal miners were slit after being blindfolded and hands tied behind their backs a security official said, requesting anonymity. Following the attack, members of the Hazara minority in Balochistan's capital, Quetta, blocked the western bypass and set fire to tires to protest against the killings. Later in the day, mourners and relatives gathered to identify bodies as they arrived at a Shiite mosque, Imam Barga Waliyas, in Quetta. The control the the attack came after a relative lull in nearly a year of violence against the mainly Shiite Hazara minority in the province. Shiite Hazaras have been frequently targeted by Taliban, Islamic State and other Sunni Muslim militant groups in both Pakistan and Afghanistan. In news from Afghanistan. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Sunday evening held a meeting with the Afghan negotiators in Doha peace talks and assured them of the government's full support. Ghani, ahead of the next round of peace talks, which is scheduled for 5th of January, said the government and the people of Afghanistan are supporting the negotiators and expect them to continue the talks in the light of the constitution and the people's views. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani met with Afghan negotiators on Sunday evening and assured them of the government's full support, informed the presidential palace. Ghani during the meeting said that the government and the people of Afghanistan are supporting the negotiators and expect them to continue the talks in light of the constitution and people's views. This comes as next round of peace talks between the Afghan negotiators and the Taliban after a break of 23 days is scheduled to begin in Doha on January 5. The first round of the talks continued for three months with the Afghan government's representatives and the Taliban negotiators 
agreeing on procedural rules for the talks and sharing verbally their demands for the agenda points with each other. The Afghan government's negotiating team held three meetings with the leadership committee of the High Council for National Reconciliation during the halt between peace talks since December that was aimed at further discussions around the next steps in the process. The peace negotiations are expected to resume as violence remains high in the country, raising concerns about the future of the process. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli, who has been reduced to a caretaker Prime Minister since December 20, has defended his move of dissolving the parliament, saying it was a political move and that it does not warrant a judicial review. Responding to the Supreme Court's December 25 show cause notice, Oli furnished his response through the Office of the Attorney General on Sunday. The 11-page response from Oli to the Supreme Court stated, both the acts recommending the dissolution of the House and its dissolution are purely political decisions. The Supreme Court itself has set a principle that on such issues, questions of constitutional and legal validity must not be the matter of judicial review. Oli argues that he was forced to seek a fresh mandate as the government was held hostage to infighting in his ruling Nepal Communist Party. After dissolving the parliament, Oli has called snap polls for April 30 and May 10. Scores of tourists thronged the snow-covered peaks of Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir this past weekend to enjoy winter sports. The tourists expressed they were eagerly waiting for the winter season to take part in adventure sports like ice skating, skiing, gliding and racing. Tourists swarmed the snow-covered peaks of India's premier ski resort town, Golmark, in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir this past weekend to enjoy winter sports amid the coronavirus pandemic. Golmark, a bowl-shaped plateau at an altitude of 8,500 feet in Pir Panjal of the Himalayan range, is a favourite among tourists from across the country and outside to try out different winter sports. Tourists and participants said they were eagerly waiting for the winter season to enjoy the snow and participate in adventure sports like ice skating, skiing, gliding and racing. We were waiting for many days that we will have a lot of games in one day. We are seeing a lot of different players from different states. You can see young players who are coming here. They want to see them in this season. They want to see them in the future. They want to see them in the future. And scare them or the people who are connected to winter sports. They have come from different states and are welcoming them. And overall, the biggest message of Kashmir is that it is boosted by Kashmir. So this is a good sign. Kashmir is a good sign for us. Kashmir is a good sign for us. Kashmir is a good sign for us. Kashmir touts itself as the Switzerland of the East. It is a mecca for climbers, skiers, honeymooners and flame makers who are drawn to the region's soaring peaks, fruit orchards and timber houseboats bobbing on the iconic Dal Lake in Srinagar. Moving on. The tallest statue of Hindu Lord Shiva in India was unveiled recently on the premises of Azhimala Temple in southern Kerala state. The 58 feet tall statue made of concrete depicts Shiva having wavy hair with holy ganges on his head. The statue was completed in a duration of six years by a local artist. A temple in southern India's Kerala state unveiled the country's tallest statue of Hindu Lord Shiva at a height of 58 feet over the past weekend. The statue at Azimala Temple in Kerala's capital Tiruvanthanampuram lies at the shores of Arabian Sea. It is detailed by the statue of Goddess Ganges with wavy hair on Shiva's head, signifying the wild nature of the river. In the Purana, this is a Shivari Bhoom. In the Purana, this is a Shivari Bhoom. The statue took six years to complete. The monolith sculpture lies at a height of 20 feet from the sea. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. 
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.